so on the vast list of things that I'm not known for, uh, the video quality is number three. So, uh, if this is rather too fluid, uh, because it's got that idiotic stabilization stable thing going on, then either blame my phone or blame YouTube's mobile uploader, because that's what I'm going to be using, because I can't be bothered to pull out my camera and another SD card to properly record this. This is, after 30 seconds, this is going to be a very dirty, very hastily done update. Uh, updating you with some information you didn't know was relevant. <laughs> because it probably isn't. So, yeah. <coughs> uh, I don't know if it's immediately visually noticeable, but if I get up close, you'll probably see that it's quite dingy and dirty. This is not the Famicom that I, yeah. This is not the Famicom that I have been using for the past uh, two or three years. Yeah, that one's sadly died. Rip in peace, 1984 to 2016. This is a replacement that I got, and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, I'm really not in the mood. I'm super, I'm super tired. I don't want to do this. I'm not. I'm. I'm also really sad because I've got a dead Famicom now. The PPU died because this this killed it. You've probably seen this a lot on the internet and on forums and on Twitter and the like. This. This is a console killer, and it doesn't work on this. It just doesn't boot, so that's, I guess, a good thing, because that means it's not going to be killing it anytime soon. But yeah, I've got a dead Famicom. I got this replacement. Uh, I tried fixing it. I pulled the PPU out of that, that part's NES board right there. Pulled the PPU out. Didn't work. So anyway, I've got this one. It seems to work fine, and even though it's in, like, I don't know. I don't know how the Japanese grade their stuff. I guess the Jap the the Famicom that I had there is like a B quality Famicom. This is like a C or a D. <laughs> yeah, I know it still looks pretty good, but this is a D apparently, and it came with the manual. And judging by the manual, even though it looks quite like significantly, uh, you, it's noticeably worse looking than the other Famicom. It's actually four years newer. Uh, manufact. I don't know if this is the manufacture date or the packaging date or whatever. But uh, this was uh, brought into the unleashed into the world in uh, on March twenty second, Showa sixty three, which is nineteen eighty eight I think. So yeah, Showa sixty three three twenty six. So four years newer and it's got like seven years extra worth of dirt on it. If I lift up the controller, it's got kind of that. The front face of the controller is just ruined. Uh, I haven't AV modded it. I'm just going to take the top shell off of this, uh, off of this one, and put the top shell of the Famicom on there because it's got like the AV circuitry attached to it. It's already got the ports on the back and everything. So I'm just going to swap out the shells, and that'll pretty much fix the cosmetic side of things. I actually kind of figured that would happen, which is why I chose another one that was. Uh... Actually, that's really weird. That's really weird. If Showa 63 is 1988, which I'm pretty sure, like, I'm dead certain it is, it's 1988. It's really weird that they would have a 1988 Famicom that isn't, that doesn't have the Famicom family logo on there. That's strange. Huh. I don't know. But yeah, I'm gonna replace the shell on the thing and it'll be, uh, AV modded. It'll just be three solder points and it'll be AV modded. Good as new! Hmm. Yeah, I guess. But, uh, the actual relevant... Th well, that's one relevant thing. The other relevant thing is that, like, days before I got... Like, the day after the Fam my Famicom died, I got a TNS HFC... Oy, HFC4, which, uh, my 5 is a 5B NSF cartridge. It's got the, uh, the little socket for the YMZ294 on there. So play 5b stuff this has the this has the fds rp2c33 on there and you'll notice that little red square says compatible that's because the audio the audio mixing circuit on this this is the second take and i didn't have much luck lifting this off in the first take either 
the audio mixing circuit on this circuit on this is compatible with the original FDS audio circuit, complete with the 4096 hex inverter amplifier. Because you know Nintendo were cheap and they're like, let's not get an amp, let's use a hex inverter. At least I think that's what a 4069 is. It's a hex inverter, right? Yeah, I think it's. I think that's what it is. I don't know. Somebody tell me I'm wrong, please. So yeah, that means I don't have to mess around with trying to find the right mixing volume for the FDS on hardware. I can just mess around with trying to find it in Famitracker, and I have. It should be set to minus three decibels. Which is rather annoying, because that means everything I've worked on with the FDS is too quiet. Also, this is not like the HFC5, or the HFC3, or the HFC2, or the HFC1, any other one where it's got these buttons to change NSF. To actually, you know, change the file. It doesn't have those. It's got, the, it, it, it like, stock. It has this really stupid, like, uh... This is my terrible camcorder that I use that I used to use many years back. You may remember those first videos of mine. Where it's got this. Yeah, it does that. That's how you change NSFs on that normally. It's a totally different switch. I got a replacement one and it's actually this kind so it doesn't work. So uh, it's just, you know, forward back to change NSFs. So I went ahead and replaced that with two uh, momentary push buttons. And it actually works pretty well. But the weird thing is, I don't know if it's the buttons themselves or the capacitors they used on them or what, but it looks like to actually change files, you have to um, you have to hold the button. I don't know if it did that originally with the, like, the first switch, but like, look, if I just push it, nothing's going to happen. I have to like hold them a little bit. So yeah, let's go ahead and put this back on there it goes. this is like a really horribly shitty uh, shitty video it's not fast and it's not short but you know it's it's what I'm doing so I just turn it on blink and I like that blue glow hold on a second let's see how that looks That's a very dark blue LED. It's like almost ultraviolet. But yeah, yeah, that's just the uh, that's the Valentine's Day waifu thread that I won't be participating in because I'm horrible, horrible husbando. Sorry, Nyaruko. But yeah, uh, this actually it actually works really well. I do I, I like it. I'm, I don't regret buying this broken thing. It's just kind of um, it's kind of worrying knowing that this one could die at any any moment. Because that's what the other one did. It was working, and then I put this in, and then it died. <laughs> and then I put this in this in this one, and it just it wouldn't boot. But every other cartridge works. So yeah, knowing that this could die at any conceivable moment is very, very worrying. But, yeah. Oops. That was a test. But yeah, it's got... And uh, it's got FDS stuff. VRC6. VRC7. Here's an FDS one. Here's one of my Famicompo entries. If you notice, the FDS is very quiet. Here's a Nordleff cover I'm working on. Broken. Gimmick. Alcyon! There we go, that was a good FPS one. I'll do like a proper video on 
the HFC, like a, a real proper in-depth video on the HFC and this again. Uh, and, and the HFC 5 too, why not? I'll include all those in there. And if I can ever actually fix, because the thing about this cartridge is it was released non-working. I now know of a bunch of people in Japan, obviously, that got this cartridge and have like have done fixes to the cartridge. They have to crack open the cartridge and add a few parts so that it'll actually work on an original Famicom because it doesn't. It just it it for whatever reason they hyped up the release of this so much and then they ship it out and it doesn't work or it kills your system. So yeah, uh, I'll be doing that and. <laughs> Uh, sometime in the next week or so. Uh, bye. Happy Valentine's Day.